I'm Ryan Leaf and I'm best friends with Greg McHale. I've known Greg for 20 years now, I guess. We've worked together in law enforcement, we've hunted together, we've adventure raced around the world. We've obviously been out on these mountains in the Yukon for a long, long time, suffering and having a lot of fun and enjoying our adventures. It's just phenomenal to be out on the land here, especially with two great friends. And for me, this trip here isn't so much about sharing Greg and I's long story together of hunting or racing or working together. It's really just about getting out here and spending quality time in, a, in an amazing place with quality people. And from that perspective, really, isn't that just the uh, story of all hunters? Just being out with your friends and being out in amazing spots and sharing these experiences and creating memories. And that's really what we're doing. Sure is winter up here. This is not a winter camping trip, this is a hunting trip. All right. I, mean, I think we have four days or so left. Why do you always do that? What? We always, it's the last minute, like all this drama. Why couldn't we come a week ago or two weeks ago? Because I was waiting for warmer weather so that you didn't complain. <laughs> yeah, okay. <laughs> That's I like that. Okay, we are here. We're not last minute, we have four days. And it's always fun to watch Brent and, and Greg interact. They get along great, but then they push and pull each other. They have a lot of similarities, but there's some polar opposites here that create some dynamics that are a lot of fun. I'm not asking you to, to tell me which direction to go. So when you're just the observer like I am on this trip, um, watching that all play out is highly entertaining and, and it's just going to be a lot of fun and to be part of Brent's first bison will be an amazing experience. We're going to go find a bison for this elderly statesman who happens to be my father underneath the goggles. I, I watch a lot of American television so that's where that kind of comes from, the elderly statesman. Okay. Perfect. I don't know what you'd say in Canada, just the old guy. <laughs> just, the just the old guy? Yeah. I've been on a hunt with Greg and Ryan in the past where they've harvested bison. So this is my first bison hunt and I'm just looking forward to being able to be a part of this and get out into the wilds and Yukon is wild, let me tell you. And uh, just being a part of this is amazing. That's really cool to be on an experience with anybody going after their very first animal is always such a neat thing to be part of. And more particularly for Brent, I mean, he's in his 70s, he's super tough, and we've got a long journey to go. So there's gonna be a lot of pushing and pulling, some motivation, but I know he's capable of doing it. There's a reason that uh, we wanted to come in here. There's bison here. Because <laughs> there's bison here. The bison are a long way away from where we can see them from here, and we have no idea what they are or how many there are. So we're gonna have to get a little bit closer and pull the spotting scope out and go from there. Sounds good. Let's get going. When it gets colder, the sun's about to go down. The hard work is ahead. The easy work is behind because it was just a thought in the process of putting this whole thing together. So now we've got to start keying in on the difficulty of getting to where we want to go to hunt. I should put the spotting scope on them and see if, see if there's a bow in there, or a decent bow in there, if we can see it, yeah. and then uh, make a decision kind of tomorrow, because I don't think we really have time tonight. Oh. So the challenges of winter hunting are on us. You know, not only do you have to worry about exposed skin and, you know, freezing yourself, but you know, after last night, it was probably minus 30, somewhere in there. Now the snow machines don't want to start this morning. So I'm not all that optimistic that the four stroke is going to start. It doesn't sound like it at all. So we literally had to move our tent on top of the snow machine and we're hoping to warm it up. We've got two machines down right now. Two are running, two are down. We're back remote, and without these machines, it's gonna be pretty tough to uh, hunt, let alone get out of here. I'm glad you're optimistic. I, I, I've never been in this situation before. We still have two machines, so I'm not sitting around here waiting that hopefully a bison walks over top of that hill and we... That'd be nice. <laughs> Want to commit suicide. <laughs> it's gotta go. It's been... An hour since we put this on, and it's hot in here. Oh, yeah! 
Now that is a sweet sound. I don't know if you can hear that sound, but that's the sweet sound of success. So we now have all the machines running. Right on. And now we've got to get back, uh, see if we can find some bison. I think a bison hunt takes so much more out of you because you're dealing with the elements and you're dealing with high terrain, high mountains, high climbing, and a lot of hard work. We were going through terrain that was uh, way beyond my comprehension. I never thought that this is what I was getting into when Greg invited me along on a bison hunt. You're in a situation where it's life and death here in the Yukon because you're dealing again, like I said, with the elements. Boy, I'll tell you, we went through so many things. In fact, we had to offload our equipment in order to get up some of these mountains and go back and reload and come back up again. Greg's standards are at a level that you have to uh, attain or he's not gonna take you into these situations because it's actually quite dangerous. If you're not physically prepared, you're not gonna make it through this stuff because uh, he has explained to me all the things that could come up and then it's the exception, right? Because you don't know what's gonna happen next because it, it's an adventure that is uh, built with uh, drama. You don't have to create drama because it's there and it, it happens all the time. And he's made that clear to me. I, I understand that from moose hunting and I understand that from sheep hunting. So here we are and uh, really looking forward to uh, getting at it. I'm sure glad the snow machine stayed where it did. Are you okay? Things are always changing, evolving. So you gotta be prepared to adapt. And that's what this whole thing is about, adapting. You know, no matter how strong you think you are, there's always those times when you reach out to the, the guys on the team. It's part of the game. It's part of the reality. It's part of being tough and sucking up. And I say to myself, come on, buddy, pull it together. Don't let that, the other team down. Let's get going and we get through it. We get through it. And thankfully, I mean, it, it, it could be the other way. I didn't get hurt. I didn't injure myself. Better put the scope on these ones, I guess. There's 20 down down low in this valley. We're gonna go see how close we can get. Okay, let's go get them. Okay, go lead the way. There's a lone bull out there.
You see them? They're all lined right out. There's really no shot anyways. And um, get down in here and you can see that they just, they just lined out and they're gone. So I think these ones are, uh, are safe. <laughs> but on the way across, I did see two bison on the side of the hill, which would be in a better spot that maybe we could stock them. But that's on the way back anyways, so we might as well do it. Uh, once I had the scope on it, it was, it was, it was pretty exciting. I, um, just to see them through the scope even was uh, a unique experience. I look forward to obviously harvesting an animal, but that's, that's only part of it. Anybody that watches this show and sees what we went through, just to get into position, would have a feeling for how tough it really is. And, uh, and I'm not saying nothing about age. There's no, uh, no bison to cook tonight, but uh, I'm sure we'll figure something out.